So hey guys, it's John here. I just wanted to take a moment to share with you some uh, exciting progress that we've made over the last few months. This has been in the works for a while. It's still under construction, but we wanted to introduce you to our new studio. Come on through. Let me sh share with you what it is that we've been working on. Oh, watch the door there. All right, so welcome everybody. This is the new space. So we've got big plans for this area here. We'd love this to be very creative space. So we're in the studio. The studio. <laughs> we were really fortunate our neighbours moved out of the building. We were able to secure the tenancy. There's going to be a lot of content that's going to be generated in this space. We've been thinking about how can we evolve Infinity Effect to welcome a whole new slew of guests along and just open this up to a greater market. Welcome to the new studio area. There's still some tools and stuff that are on the benches. There's cables and stuff all in the background, but um, I mean, this is just the beginning for us. This is just the beginning. You know, 2018 was a phenomenal year, uh, just learning the ropes of how to produce content. I was having lunch the other day with a good friend of mine. He mentioned to me, he's like, dude, your last podcast was in November last year. What's going on? Perhaps we were procrastinating a little bit around that. We had a lot on our plate. Uh, yada yada, I'm sure I could come up with a whole bunch of excuses why we didn't do it, but the reality of it is that it's taken a renewed focus and intention for us to re-engage and remember why this is such an important vehicle for us. Can I get you to say something into the microphone, gents? Something into Hello. the microphone, gents. Can you hear it? Okay, we've got three wavelengths. Perfect. Well, it's red, so is it good? It is good. Yeah, yeah, it's doing... Generally this. red is bad. No, no, it means recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's live. Sometimes when you set big goals, audacious goals as you called them, it can turn around and you sort of go, ah, uh, where do I actually start here? And how do I start rolling this out? What if I don't do it right? And what if I make a mistake? And what if I get it wrong? When you start allowing those thoughts in, procrastination comes into it because it's sort of like, well, I'll, I just won't do anything then. Um, I'll, I'll just wait and, and hopefully everything will work itself out. It's up to you. You've got to make that call. You've got to make those decisions. You've got to hit the button and, and go for it. We've got a number of things going on with our property management, with our development, with our marketing, with Infinity Effect and everything that's happening there. And there is that much work to do. So you, sometimes I can come in and I'm like, I don't even know what to do first. It's the tough times. It's the times where it's everything isn't perfect. You're not feeling well. You're tired. You've got too much on your plate. You've got problems at home. Pardon the pun. You've got to build the muscle. When I go to the gym, you know, I just drag myself in. I am here. You see, I'm here at the gym every morning. You know, I'm tired, you know, mentally stressed. Go do the gym session. At the end of it, I feel great. Go home, feel accomplished. And then I can then tackle my other stuff. But then the, the next day happens. So what happens? Again, there'll be challenges and not feeling great. Still go to the gym. So do the same thing because the behavior is now set. It's a habit that I have created now. I'm going every day, day after day, day after day, day after day, day after day. And even when I'm tired, even when I'm when it's hot, even when it's cold, no matter what excuse, I'm going there. The amount of people that want to follow in your footsteps, I mean, that, that's just amazing for me. It brings to mind the younger version of me. Procrastination was one of those things that I uh, would do uh, because I used to term myself a perfectionist. I was like, unless I, unless it's perfect, I'm not going to execute on the thing. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it was that was just my my lame excuse for not wanting to be found out, you know, for not wanting people to um, see me having a go and not getting it exactly the way that I had hoped. Uh, so it was more the ego getting in the way than anything else. Mike, were you a stellar salesperson when you started out? Uh, of course you oh, are. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me think about that. Um, <laughs> sales for me is a, is a true love and a passion of mine. But more importantly, I wouldn't have been able to achieve what I've uh, achieved in my sales career if I truly didn't form some, some very specific habits. And the main one really is knowing um, my results or my statistics, my stats. I've had two in the sales world. I've had two mentors that have truly shifted my life. One was when I was 22, 23. He taught me know your numbers. At the time, hated him. After I'd done it for seriously three years, I went, thank God you came into my life. It transformed my life. Second guy was when I was 29. He was the best salesperson that I've ever seen to date. And I've seen them all around the world. He taught me this one little phrase. Results are the only truth, the rest is ego.
Who believes what they're here to accomplish extends beyond themselves. As a result of sharing and exchanging ideas and thoughts, we are sharpening each other's intellects and awarenesses. And we're reaching back in time and bridging the gap that perhaps existed in the past for us. Because it's so much more than just about creating content. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about empowering those who engage with this content to be the very best version of themselves. But the thing about it is like, nobody ever starts out amazing at anything, right? We all start somewhere. And this is where we have come in 12 months, super excited about where we're going to over the next 12 and beyond that. So stay tuned.